Hi, it's Carly McAvoy. I wanted to show you how to solve inequalities that require two steps or three steps. Also, I'm going to show you how to graph it a couple of different ways and how to state the answer as an inequality and also as an interval notation. So a lot for each one. When you see an inequality like this that you want to isolate the x, so the first thing I would do in this one is to add 5 to both sides. When you add 5 here, it becomes 0, and 10 plus 5 is 15. So that would give us negative 3x is greater than or equal to 15. And then we're going to divide both sides by the coefficient. And the coefficient here is negative 3. If you divide both sides by negative 3, then you're going to get x is less than or equal to negative 5. Remember, when you divide by a negative, you have to reverse the direction of the arrow. That's why we switch that to a less than. And 15 divided by negative 3 is negative 5. This is how we can state it as an inequality. And then we can graph it in two different ways. We can say that we have a closed circle, which when we have an equal to part as well as our inequality, we say we have a closed circle. And because it's less than, we're going to go to the left. Another way to graph that when you have an equal to part in an inequality is to graph as a bracket. That bracket says that negative 5 is not just a starting point, but it's part of the solution. And then again, we're going to shade to the left. So that's two ways to graph. And then how does that look like as an interval notation? Well, what we're saying is everything that makes this true, starting with negative 5, negative 5, and going to the left. So um, if I go to the left forever, I hit negative infinity, which is over here, and positive infinity, which is over here. So we're saying we're going from negative infinity up to and stopping at negative 5. You notice that when we have a negative, and when we have infinity, whether it's negative or positive, we're always going to put a parentheses. But our sign with our number is always going to match what it was on the graph. So an equal to part has a bracket on the graph. It has a bracket in the interval notation as well. Okay, for the next one, I'm going to start off the same way, subtracting 6 from both sides to isolate that y uh, value. And then I have to get rid of the negative 8. So I divide both sides by negative 8. Once again, I'm dividing by a negative. And when I divide by a negative, I have to reverse the direction of the arrow. So I end up with y is greater than 1 half. And then I'm going to graph that. This time I don't have the equal to part that I did over here, so I have an open circle or parentheses in the other, uh, the other method of graphing. We use parentheses when we don't have an equal to part, a bracket when we do. And this one, y is greater than 1 half, so it's shading off to the right. The arrow is pointing in the direction we want to shade whenever our variable is on the left. And then what does that mean for our interval notation? It means we're starting at 1 half and going forever to the right which goes to infinity, and so we have 1 half to infinity. In this case, we have a parentheses by the 1 half because there was a parentheses on our graph, and we always have a parentheses with infinity. All right, in the next one, we're going to add 7 to both sides. That's going to isolate that x term, and then we're going to divide both sides by 2, and that's going to give us look, we're dividing by a positive, so we don't reverse the direction of the arrow. That's going to just leave it the same. But what I'm saying here is x is less than negative 1. Even though x is on the right, it's saying that it's less than because that inequality is pointing at the x. So that graph is going to look like this. It's x is everything is less than negative 1, so it goes to the left. So you have to think about when you have it on the other side how you're reading that. There's no equal to part, so it's going to be an open circle or a parentheses, but notice in this case our parentheses is opening to the left because we're graphing to the left. And then how does that look as an, as an interval notation? Well, we're going forever to the left, which goes to negative infinity like we did over here, and we're ending at negative 1. However, this time we have a parentheses on our graph because we don't have an equal to sign, so a parentheses in our interval notation. And the other three, um, we're going to do this in two different steps, but you could do it all in one step. That is, I'm going to add 7 to both sides, and then get rid of the, um, that gets rid of the 7 over here. And then I'm going to add 6 in to both sides, and that gets rid of, or moves those n terms all together, giving me 2n is greater than or equal to 12. Then I divide both sides by 2, and notice I'm dividing by a positive, so I would not reverse the direction of the arrow, it would just be that. 
and in my graph I can have a closed circle going to the right or a bracket going to the right depending on which method your instructor or program is asking you to use. And then what does that look like as uh, interval notation when we're starting at 6 and we're going forever to the right, but this time our 6 has a bracket, so we have a bracket. If you have an equals to part, you have a bracket, you have a bracket in interval notation. And this just says starting at 6 and going to the right. All right, over here, same thing. I could do this in one in one step, sort of, but I'm going to do it in two. I subtracted 1 from both sides. It gave me negative 9. And then I subtracted 2p from both sides. Now, I tend to put the variable on the left side because it's easier to graph that way. But if you don't care, it's fine. I showed you one where I had the variable on the right, and it's totally possible to get the correct answer. You just have to think a little bit when you graph it. Okay, after those two steps, I'm down to 3p is greater than negative 9, and I divide both sides by my coefficient. Now, we did not divide by a negative, so we do not reverse the direction of the arrow. You always want to ask yourself that. That gave us p is greater than negative 3, and so our graph looks like open circle or parentheses because we don't have the equal to part starting at negative 3 and going to the right. And as an interval notation, that looks like this. We're starting at negative 3 and heading to the right, but because we don't have an equal to part, we have a parentheses rather than the bracket that we had over here. And the last one we're going to do, um, I'm going, I don't know what I started with. I started by subtracting 8h from both sides, which brought negative 5h over here. And some people are always like, I always try to keep a positive. That's fine. In inequalities, I try to keep the variable on the left, and that's why I did it that way and then add 8 to both sides. Notice minus 8 and plus 8 is going to give us 0. <clears throat> when you divide by a negative, you do have to reverse the direction of the sign of the arrow here, but this doesn't really have a sign attached to it, so that's not going to change anything. We're just going to get h is less than or equal to 0. And finally, um, what does that look like graphed? It looks like we have a solid circle or closed circle and a bracket if you were doing it this way. You would probably never have to do both in one answer. Either your question is going to ask you to use a circle or parentheses or bracket, so you just have to decide which way you're being asked to graph. And then the interval notation here, again, you can see we're heading off to the left. That's negative infinity. Since negative infinity is on the left, it has to be on the left in our interval parentheses by infinity always, whether it's on the left or right. And then we're going up to and including zero, so we put the bracket there. So that is a quick synopsis of several different types of things to graph, different ways to graph them, different ways to state them, and I hope you have a fantastic day.